Hey there, Horace. I just wanted to let you know that we are officially done with the unpacking. I guess that means that we can also officially start our new life as almost husband and wife. Oh, I really am just so excited and proud of us. We've worked so hard and come through so much to get here. I know! And I can't wait to finally start living with you. Feels like we've been talking about this forever. I know, and now it's all finally coming together and happening for real. I'm so excited to see what our life is going to be like now that we're going to be together. This is actually the first time I'm ever going to be living with another man, so I bet there'll be a lot to learn. <laughs> well, I don't think it's going to be that strange. I mean, in some ways, it's just like having a roommate who you're going to be married to. <laughs> well, if you say so. But still, I wonder what kind of odd little habits of yours I'm going to pick up on. I don't know. I guess that I'm just excited and nervous for all this to start finally happening. Oh, I understand that. I mean, after all, your father did pass away when you were pretty young, right? That's right. My dad died when I was only five years old, and so I hardly have any memories of living with him at all. Although I I've been told that my mom can be pretty mannish as well, so... <laughs> Who knows, maybe I do know what it's like to live with a man, and I just haven't realized it yet. Well, I suppose you're gonna find out soon enough. But yeah, I did get that kind of feeling from your mom, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, she could get pretty scary sometimes. But of course, she was also a really good mom as well. I think that she did a great job raising you, and you should have nothing but pride over the job that she did. I agree. I mean, I love my mom so much, and I realize all the sacrifices she made for us. In fact, I suppose I loved her so much that that's probably why I'm getting married at the age I am. I just always wanted to make sure that she had someone around who could take care of her. Oh, come on. What's wrong with getting married at 30? Although, it is pretty surprising that I was your first boyfriend as well. I don't know, to me it makes the whole thing feel like fate at work to bring us together. I know what you mean, although sometimes I get a little embarrassed thinking like that. I don't think you have anything to be embarrassed or ashamed of, Sally. I'm honored to be the first man that you've had feelings for like this. And I just know that you're going to get used to living with my stinky, gross man self right away! <laughs> Well, you should have seen how shocked my friends were when I told them that we were getting married. Not only were they shocked that I even had a boyfriend, but they couldn't believe how fast we decided to get hitched. I suppose you could say that we weren't really dating for all that long. But what kind of things were your friends saying to you about us? Oh, they were just asking if I was sure about this and if you were the one and all that kind of thing. And I told them that of course I was sure and that I really love you. I explained how well you take care of me, too. Aw, well, that is really sweet of you. But I suppose you would have been pretty disappointed if you weren't getting married yet, right? I mean, you were just talking about being too old and stuff. Oh, well, it's okay, though. Besides, there's more immediate things to worry about. But I think you were right to say that we should skip spending too much on the wedding and put the money towards our honeymoon. Besides, both my parents are gone now, so as much as I can't wait to get married, I don't feel a huge need to have a giant ceremony. I understand that, but I'm also sure that both your parents are looking down at you and couldn't be more proud of what you've accomplished. I just hope they can rest easier knowing that their daughter is in good hands with you, Horace. I never really saw myself getting married before I met you, if I can be honest. So this even took me a little bit by surprise. I mean, when you told me that I was the first person that you've ever dated, I was pretty shocked. You're so kind and sweet and pretty, I couldn't believe it! Oh, Horace, you're going to make me blush if you start saying all of that. But thank you for the kind words. Oh, also, before I forget, we're going to go to the courthouse tomorrow, right? The courthouse? What are you going to do there? Well, we need to have the civil ceremony and pick up our marriage certificate and all that. Oh, really? Is that how that works? I feel like every state has their own laws, so it's hard to keep track of. Of course that's how it works. I told you that we'd have to do this earlier. Did you forget? Well, it's not that I forgot, but I actually have some errands that I need to run tomorrow. I'm really sorry, but could you do all of that by yourself? You want me to go and pick up our marriage certificate all by myself? I don't know, I feel like this is kind of a big deal. I was picturing us going and doing this together. I know, but this thing popped up and I just have to take care of it and it would be impossible to try to reschedule it now. Oh, I see. Well, I was really looking forward to getting to do this with you all day. 
Well then, how about we just go and do it together a different day? Would that work for you? Well, it's just that tomorrow is actually the anniversary of my parents, uh, so I, I kind of wanted to try and do it then. I don't really have any other day that would make it as special as that one. Oh, I see. Well, I don't really know what to say. I just... I, I can't believe that you forgot we were going to do this. I, I'm, I'm kind of hurt by this, Horace. Uh, I really am so sorry about the mix-up, but I just don't see how I could get tomorrow to work for me. So if you really only want to do it tomorrow, then I think you'll have to go on your own. But I promise that we'll have a great first anniversary next year, got it? I promise you, you have my word, Sally! Ugh, it's fine. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be picky like this. I, I can just go and do it myself tomorrow. But just please don't ever forget something this important again, okay? Hey, Sally, are you there? Really sorry about this, but it's going to be another late night for me. You could go ahead and eat dinner without me. You mean you're staying late at the office again? What is it this time? I'm really sorry, but there's a lot to do here and I won't be home until late. You'll probably end up going to bed before me. You know, you've been coming home later for a while now. We've been married for a month and I feel like you and I have barely gotten to spend any time together. To be honest with you, I'm starting to feel pretty lonely waiting at home for you. I'm so sorry about this, Sally, but there are just some really important things that I need to take care of and I can't move them around. And just what really important thing is keeping you late at the office this time? Because even on our wedding day, you said the same thing. I don't know, I guess I just thought that things would change when you and I got married, but you're starting to make me nervous. I'm starting to wonder if you even really love me, Horace. What are you talking about? Of course I really love you! How could you even say something like that to me? Well, you sure have a funny way of showing it when I hardly ever see my own husband. I just wish you would try and show me that you loved me with words or actions or something. Okay, okay. I'll come clean to you, Sally. The truth is that I've been wanting to talk to you about this for a while now. Come clean about what? What is it? Please, Horace, you're starting to scare me here. Have you been hiding something? Do you have a secret that I should know about or something? The truth about me is that my dad is really sick. Deathly sick, in fact. And he's going to have to have a surgery if he has any shot at living. Not only that, but the surgery is going to cost tens of thousands of dollars that we don't have. Are you serious? Oh my gosh, Horace, I, I had no idea about your dad. We've been married this whole time and you haven't even gone to go and visit them once. I know, I know. And I feel absolutely terrible about it. But when I found out about my dad being sick, well, I didn't want to spoil the first month of being married. So I'm sorry for not saying this earlier. Oh, Horace, you should know that you don't have to hide that kind of thing from me. Please, you should have come to me about this sooner. I would have supported you. You're right, I should have known better, but I guess that I just let my pride get in the way. But now that I think about it, you're absolutely right. I guess I'm nothing more than a coward, and now we can all see that. But I'm sorry for scaring you. That isn't what I wanted to do. It's okay, but I really was getting nervous since I was barely seeing you. Although I I'm sure that you must be so worried about your dad. But you should have known that I'd understand where you were coming from. After all, both of my parents passed away to illnesses that I wasn't able to help them get treatment for. But now that I know this about your dad, I would like to do anything that I can to help you, if you'll let me. Well, right now my dad's condition is worsening, and he's in the hospital getting treatment. I've been doing a lot to try to save money where I can. But I've also been going to visit him before and after work when I'm able to. So that's why you've been gone from the house so often? Well, please, tell me if there's anything that I can do. You mean that you really want to help me out? I don't know what to say. Horace, of course I want to help you. You're my husband, and your dad is my father-in-law. We're family, and this is what families do. It's not going to be easy, but at least we'll have each other. Sally, I just don't even know what to say right now. Except thank you. Thank you so much for always wanting to be there for me. Do you think you could reach out to my mom and ask her for things that you could do? You know her knees are bad, so it's extra difficult for her to take care of my dad. Got it. I'll try and make some time to go and visit your mom at home so that I can talk to her about this. 
That would be a huge help! I'm sorry for the trouble this might cause you, but I'm so happy we're going to do this together. Hey Sally, are you still at my parents' house? I was just curious if you had anything planned for dinner. Oh shoot, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm still with your mom, and then I'll have to go and do some shopping too. Oh, I see. So then, what about dinner? What am I supposed to do? Um, I'll be sure and stop somewhere on the way home and uh, pick something up for you. Oh man, so we're getting takeout again? I'm starting to miss your cooking, you know? When was the last time you made something for me? I know, and I'm sorry I haven't. I've just been really busy trying to help at your mom's. In fact, I'm of half a mind to just skip dinner myself and go straight to bed. I've been running around all day trying to help her out. I feel like I haven't had a second to sit down at all. Okay, well, you do realize that I need to eat too, right? You're not just going to let me starve, are you? I'm sorry, Horace. I should have told you I was still with your mom. If you're really hungry right now, how about you cook something for yourself? There should be some leftovers in the fridge if you want some of those. You really expect me to eat leftovers? No! I'm going to draw myself a bath. You better get back here and have dinner ready by the time I get out! But why can't you just make something for yourself? I just told you that I was with your mom all day trying to help her out. And what about the duties that you have at our house, huh? Did you forget about those? I didn't forget. I was just putting your mom and dad first. You know, you could help out a bit more around the house since I'm helping your mom now. Listen to me, Sally. You were the one that said you wanted to help out since my dad was sick, right? So don't try to slog off your responsibilities on me just because you bit off more than you could chew. I'm not going to cover for you, do you get me? I know I said that I wanted to help you out because of your dad. But I guess I just thought that we'd be doing more cooperating because of that as well. And your mom is working me really hard. She has a comment to make about every little thing that I do. So by the time I'm done at her place, I am just absolutely exhausted. I'm starting to get pretty sick of all these excuses that you're trying to give me. You're the one who said you wanted to help, so why don't you keep your word and help? Horace, I think that you've really started to change recently. You used to be so sweet and kind to me, and I haven't felt that way in a while now. Well, if you think that I've changed, it's probably because I've been having to put up with you this whole time. you have any idea how hard it's been taking care of my dad? You think you're the only one with extra work on their plate? Well, how is your dad? Is he doing any better? You haven't talked about it much. It's not looking good, and the doctors are saying that if we don't move fast, that he's not going to make it. Well, then it sounds to me like it might finally be time to schedule the surgery for him, right? I thought I told you this is going to cost me an arm and a leg, and I don't have that kind of money right now. You mean neither you nor your parents have enough money saved for something like this? Of course we don't! If we did, then we wouldn't be in this position in the first place! Well then, what are we going to do about your dad? What's going to happen to him? If you're so concerned about getting him the surgery, then why don't you cough up the money for it? You want me to pay for your dad's surgery? Well, I remember that you told me before we got married that you've been saving for years and already had something like 50000 saved up, right? Yes, I, I did tell you that. Well, then why don't you give me that money so that I can use it to save my dad's life, huh? I was really hoping to use that money after we had kids for the things we'd need for them. Or at least use it for an emergency that we might face as a family in the future. Oh, so you mean my dad lying on his deathbed isn't an emergency enough for you? You really are much more cruel than I thought. Just go ahead and say that you don't care at all about what happens to my dad. Horace, please, I think that you're being really unfair to me right now. You said that families help each other in their time of need, didn't you? So what makes this a case where you don't need to help out? What the heck did I even marry you for if you're not going to help my family? I don't understand what you mean by that. Are you saying that you only married me for my money? I'm saying that you talk about all that money that you had saved up before we got married. You knew what you were doing, too. You told me that because you knew it would sweeten the pot for us being together. Horace, I only wanted to be honest with you, and I wanted to marry you because I thought you loved me. You think that I actually fell in love with a woman who was well past her prime and had no other motivation? You really are a batty old broad, and you think that's true. I did you the favor of marrying you. I don't hesitate to leave you either.
Hey, have you still not transferred the 50 grand in my dad's surgery yet? In fact, you haven't even been in the house recently. Where are you right now? What is the matter with you, Horace? Why are you asking me this all of a sudden? This isn't all of a sudden! You've known about this for a while! Now hurry up and get the money ready for my dad! I can't just give you all the money like that at once. Besides, I really don't care what happens to your dad. Excuse me? What did you just say to me? You don't care that my dad could die any day now? What's the matter with you? You really don't care at all what happens to your father-in-law? You say all of that, but there isn't any money to give. And just what is that supposed to mean? It means that I spent it. I spent all of the money. You spent it? What are you talking about? What did you spend it on? Well, I decided to buy myself a nice little old house, if you must know. I'm going to work on it and turn it into the house of my dreams. You did what?! Why in the world did you spend your money on that? What's the matter with you? I need that money! I bought the house because that's where I'm going to live. What does that even mean? We have a nice place to live in already! I don't want to live in some crappy old house! Oh, trust me, you're not going to be welcome there anyways. I'm going to live there on my own. I'm moving out, and I want to get a divorce. Have you gone crazy?! What the heck is going on here?! I mean that I am sick and tired of putting up with you and your mother day in and day out. On top of that, I'm not going to let you lay a finger on my hard-earned savings. Oh, come on, I wasn't actually serious about that, you know? Besides, the money's going to my dad! For what? It's not like your dad is even sick. It may be true that he's in the hospital, but he's not sick. He was just in a car crash. In fact, I thought from the start that something was wrong. What hospital asks for payments for a surgery up front? And why wasn't insurance going to cover most of the cost anyways? Then, while I was at your mom's house, I used her phone to call your dad. You did what?! Why in the world would you do something like that?! Well, just to figure out what it was that was making you lie to me. But not even your dad knew that you were trying to use him to extort me. Hold on a second. I think there's been some kind of mistake here! Hmm, are you sure about that? Or do you want to tell me about the debt that you are hiding from your parents and I? Wait, hold on a second. How did you know about that? Oh, I didn't. But your mom did, didn't she? And she suggested that you try and get the money from somewhere before your dad found out. But does my dad know now? Did you tell him? Well, I haven't yet, but it's only a matter of time now. Maybe I should go and tell him, in fact. No! You can't do that! Please don't! Okay, then. Why don't you tell me just how you got into all that debt? I just... I just have really expensive tastes, is all, okay? I eat out at nice restaurants a bunch. My dad is such a tightwad that he would never be okay with me spending like that. So when he got in the hospital, I thought it was finally my time! And then, you went overboard buying steaks? That's how you ended up tens of thousands of dollars in debt? You have no idea just how strict my dad was. He would control everything at home for years! Well, that explains how your mom got to the way that she is. I've never met such a neurotic person before. I know. When dad got in the accident, we thought it meant it would finally be free of him. We thought he actually would die, but that damn old man just won't let go! He's been in the hospital for about six months now, right? You must have really thought he would never have come back. I know, but now we're neck deep in debt and in serious trouble! So I need to pay this all off before he gets out! Well, that really isn't my problem at all. I'm already moved out. Well, come back! You have to come back! And why would I do something like that? Don't you get it? Who's gonna marry if you leave me? You'll be single forever! I'd rather be single for the rest of my life than spend it with a man who tricked me for my money. I won't tell your dad, but just know that he'll find out soon enough, and when he does, I won't be there to help you. After that, the doctors started to report gradual recovery from his father. 
After spending so much time at the hospital, they thought that it was finally time he be transferred back home and taken care of there. Of course, when Horace and his mom found out about this, they started running around like crazy trying to pay off their debts. But their efforts weren't enough, and Horace's father found out about the debt within a matter of days after returning. Since the debt was all accumulated on his father's credit cards, Horace was sued by his own father. His parents also ended up divorcing in the aftermath of the truth coming to light. Horace and his mother were burdened with all of the debt that they had racked up. Not only that, but since it was the dad who owned the house, the two of them were forced out and moved into a tiny apartment. The two of them are working several jobs now in order to try and pay off their debts. As for me, I moved into my newly purchased home and slowly began turning it into a place of my own. My mom was a contractor who did a lot of her own construction work, so I had learned from a young age all about home improvement. It's sad that my first and only relationship ended the way it did, but I knew that I couldn't let down my parents who were looking down on me from above. Thank you for watching! If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this! Kyle, did you think about what you've done? Huh? What is this about? What do you mean, what is this about? Of course, it's about our fight yesterday! You said some awful stuff to me! That's why you left! You're the one who got mad for no reason. I just left on my own. What? What kind of way to talk to someone is that? You don't feel bad for what you've done at all. Don't come home! Huh? You don't want me to come home now? Where are you? I'm at home, duh. I already came home. I left yesterday, but then I thought to myself, why am I the one who has to leave? You're the one who should leave. I don't get it. You're the one who left. And now you're back? Stop talking like that. You saying things in a condescending way annoys down on me. I'm not looking down on you. I've had enough of you relentlessly speaking down on me. And you kept saying nasty things to me yesterday. Which made me wonder why I ever married you. I think the same things, but about those things I said yesterday, wasn't I just warning you? You're acting like me not cooking is a bad thing. I didn't say it that straightforwardly, but you know I have to work, so I can't make extravagant meals every day, and I can only do the laundry and clean on the weekends. But you always complain about my cooking. So, all I said was, then why don't you try cooking yourself? But you're the one who got all mad and left all of a sudden. How could you say that? You're acting like I'm the one in the wrong here. But I'm not good at cooking, so there's nothing I can do about that. There's a difference between being bad at something and just not trying. Anyways, I like cooking, so it's fine. But I hoped you could help me out a little by cleaning the dishes. That's selfish of you. Huh? You're always telling me what to do. Why can't you do it yourself? <laughs> this is useless. You're speaking so irrationally, I have no idea what you're saying. Well, you're home now, right? I am. But if you haven't thought about what you've done, then don't even think about coming home. I don't want to see your face anymore. Whatever. That's my house. And since you're there now, can you pack up your stuff since I won't be coming home today? What? You can leave by tomorrow. What are you saying? Are you planning on kicking me out again? You kicked me out yesterday! And you're doing it again? Well, I wouldn't really call it kicking you out. You left of your own accord. Just leave, okay? We're divorced now anyways. Huh? I have no idea what you're talking about. Why are you bringing up divorce? You left behind divorce papers yesterday. So don't you want to get divorced? I really thought you did. Yes, exactly. Isn't it obvious that I want a divorce? If you don't think about what you've done, 
then divorce is definitely an option. Is that okay with you? Sure. I hadn't even asked for you to do anything. But you prepared the divorce papers and everything. This is what's best for the both of us. What? What are you saying? I don't get it. I already sent off the papers. What? You had already filled out your part, so I filled out mine and sent it off. What? What are you saying? I seriously don't understand. Wait. I put the divorce papers on the table yesterday, but now they're gone. I told you that's because I sent them off. Do you understand English? Wait. Why aren't they there? Where did the divorce papers go? Give them back. I did as you wished and sent them off. What do you think you're doing? You're kidding, right? You're lying to put me in a tough position. What? You're being put in a tough position? How come? How come? You did this all on your own. So of course this would put me in a tough position. What do you think you're doing? What do you mean I did all this on my own? You're the one who filled them out. And handed them to me. Saying you wanted a divorce. Then you left. So what am I supposed to think? What else could I think other than you wanting me to submit the divorce papers? Are you being serious? Did you really submit the divorce paper? This isn't some kind of joke. Yeah. They've been accepted. So we're basically just strangers now. Are you happy? This is what you wanted. There's no way this can be true. I can't believe you would do something so selfish. You can say whatever you want, but that's my house. So, as a stranger, can you leave already? I'm giving you a day to move out, so be grateful. You seriously want to throw me out? Why? You're the one who wanted to throw me out, remember? That's why you're back home now, right? That's true, but... What? Was this whole divorce thing a big joke? You didn't really want to get divorced. You just wanted to test me by saying that you did. That's not true, but I can't believe you could so easily send off the divorce papers. This has to be a joke. It wasn't a joke for you though, right? You kept saying it every day, that you wanted a divorce, and that you don't even know why you got married to me? I did say those things, but those were just small arguments. I don't know if I would call those arguments. You're a housewife. Yet, you don't do any chores around the house. And you always complain, even though I do everything around here. Do you think I was happy in that sort of situation? And were you happy, Julie? That's not what this is about. You weren't happy, which is why you kept saying that you wanted a divorce. Isn't that right? Well, now you're free. So why don't you do whatever you want? What I want? For example, really going on dates with that guy you were cheating on me with. Huh? What are you saying? What is this about? Did you think I didn't realize that you were you were so obvious about it? What? Me cheating? I would never do such a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been almost a year. What? How did you... I've done my research. If you pay enough, you can find out anything in this world. I have all the evidence I need. Evidence? What? Pictures of you two together, your chat history. I even know his address. Why? You researched that much? Why would you go that far? Isn't it obvious? So that you have to pay for the damages. What damages? Are you seriously planning on making me pay for damages? Of course. Not only you, but from your lover, Mr. Smith, as well. I'm gonna take it all. There's no way. You even know his name. Do I know his name? Of course I do. I know his address. Duh. I even know his family. 
He's living with his wife and three children. What? Kids? And his third child was actually born pretty recently. Maybe they went with the kids to their hometown to have the third baby? That's why the house has been pretty empty lately. He has three kids. What are you going on about? I knew that Mr. Smith had a wife, but he's trying to get a divorce with her. That's why he told me to wait patiently until they're divorced. He said that! You've been played. How sad. Why do you say things like that? I don't believe this. Whatever. It's good that we got divorced. Now you can freely go off and fall in love. Even though your partner has a wife and children. I can't believe this. Are you trying to harass me by saying that? If you think I'm lying, then why don't you go and find out for yourself? I'm just telling you what I found through my research. You have to be lying. Was I being tricked this whole time? But Mr. Smith said he would leave her for me. And marry me eventually. How should I know? Deal with it yourself. You still have to pay for the damages. So you should probably go looking for a job. I can't do that. You should know this. I don't have a job. Kicking out your jobless wife just isn't right. Do you not have any sympathy for me? We're divorced, so you're just a stranger to me now. I've lost sympathy for you. You try getting cheated on for over a year. I bet you'd lose interest too. Of course, I was sad at first. But now, I feel nothing towards you. Don't say that. I now know that I was just being played. You were right. You were probably right about everything, Kyle. Huh? I'm sorry. I asked too much of you. You were right. It's impossible to work, do the chores, and do everything perfectly. That's why you got frustrated and took your anger out on me. You make no sense. I don't remember ever taking my anger out on you. I only said what was right. I understand that now. From now on, even if you don't do the chores perfectly, I won't bug you about it. I'll try my best to support you. I have no idea what you're going on about. Whatever you say now doesn't matter anymore. We can work through it. Let's make up. Let's just admit the divorce was a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. So, unfortunately, there's no way I'll be doing that. Why? I keep apologizing. So, why won't you listen to me? Don't you think selfishly sending off the divorce papers off the divorce papers was going too far? Who's the one who selfishly filled out the divorce papers and handed them over? Yeah, I know, but... And weren't you the one who went as far as to fantasize about marrying the person you cheated on me with? So, then there's no excuse. With that said, it's over between us. So take your stuff and leave by tomorrow. If you're still there tomorrow, then I'll call the cops on you. Please, rethink things. I have no will left to rethink anything. Now, go off and have a happy life with your love affair. <laughs> Kyle had already submitted the divorce papers, so no matter what Julie said, the outcome wouldn't change. Because of Kyle's announcement, Julie's cheating partner and his wife found out about their affair, and Julie got dumped. The wife also made Julie pay for damages, and the couple never ended up getting divorced. In the end, Julie had to pay twice the damages, lost her husband, her love affair, and a place to live. Her parents had already given up on her, so she couldn't rely on them. She found an employer to live with and got paid by daily installments from doing sketchy work. 